Good evening and welcome to the third round of the American F1 racing series here on F1 2020. I'm Tom Cairns in the commentary box and I'll be the commentator for this particular round of the championship. We are at the Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal, Canada for the third round of the season and what a wonderful venue it is to go racing at. So in case you want to know how it will all work, it will be an 18 minute qualifying session, just a, just the one session to determine the grid for today's race in Canada. Now the two drivers who have won so far this season, they are uh, Rade Con in the Mercedes and Gamer James 06 V2 in the McLaren. In fact, Gamer James 06 V2 is currently the championship leader on 43 points. Rade Con is second with 35. So as you can see, conditions it looks very, very much uh, cloudy over there. There's a huge dark clouds uh, gathering the circuit here at Montreal. So we need to see if rain does intervene. If it does intervene, that could take its toll on the session and determine the times for the event. So in a moment, we'll be waiting for the cars to go out on circuit for the beginning of this event. I'm just waiting for the first cars. You can see the engines firing up now in some of the garages and soon we'll be seeing some cars out on the circuit any moment now. You can see there's the Red Bull there about to go out. That could be uh, Ray. In fact, there's a gaggle of cars about to appear onto the circuit. So we'll get a good glimpse of who is driving where. see here the drivers are beginning to do their flying laps now this is Ben McEwen in the Williams about to start his flying lap now he's the first one to cross the line by the looks of it and may have been someone else who's already started their flying lap already actually now I think he's the, definitely the first one so we'll ride on board with him now here he is look so coming through turn four and through five and into the left-hander of turn six past the sector there. Nice, clean and tidy exit on those two bends, the left and the right-hander. DRS open down to turn eight. Nicely executed there and coming out of turn nine and then coming down to turn 10 where there's the slowest corner on the circuit which will take us onto the back straight. And there's a yellow flag on the start from the straight. That could just be drivers moving out of the way as others are starting their flying up. And there's Denmark 166 in the Renault just pulling onto the grass there. That could be to move out of the way, but that's quite an unusual way of uh, um, moving out of the way onto the circuit. There's a car coming up behind him now as well. In fact, he stopped out on uh, turn two. I wonder what that is all about. That's not a, a very clever way of uh, moving out of the way of other cars. He was sat on the racing line as well. But anyway, Ben McEwen has set the first time a 1 minute 8.9. He sets the benchmark for others to beat. As you can see, white stripes there in the Alpha Tari moving out of the way onto the grass on the exit of turn two and no problem there. Let's find some drivers who are also on a flying lap uh, whilst we are speaking. Now, uh, Ray uh, E46 in the Red Bull has just set uh, an unrepresentative time of 1 minute 21.2 as you can see there's quite a few yellow flags uh, are out in the circuit I think an Alfa Tari has just stopped uh, at turn 4 let's have a look and see if there's anything that's cropped up I think that's uh, updated now actually because it's got away um, 
trying to pick up on it. Oh, yeah, these go away now. White strikes 90. I think it was just continuing to move out the way of others. So, uh, so he's continuing to do that as we speak. So Tilwick 14 in the Haas on his first blind lap. There we go, look, so now we've got a leaderboard of the times on here. So Ben McEwen, fastest on a 1 minute 8.9. He's nearly a full second quicker ahead of Rade Con, who is second on the mediums on a 1 minute 9.9. .9. And in third position so far is Schiffer Gidi 15 in the Ferrari on a, a 1 minute 11.0 on the softs. So as you can see, Kareem 2L07 about to cross the start finish line to so complete his first lap. That's 1 minute 13.5. It's not the quickest of all time, so I'd expect him to go faster next time around. Who else is on a flying lap? Who's close to completing theirs? His Bishop's Finger 1 is about to complete his flying lap on the mediums. He goes 7th fastest on a 1 minute 12.3. So we expect the times to come down as the session goes on. And here we have what looks like Ray E46. I'm not sure if he's got his DRS open on the back straight there. I don't think he has. He's gone back into the pits anyway. So that's his set of the uh, tyres that he's on done there. And you can see Stoke Bloke on a flying lap. He's one of the favourites to do well here on the back of what he's done so far this season. He's currently in fourth position with 19 points. He's currently 24 points off the top is the Ferrari driver. So he'll be looking to become the third different winner from three races so far in the American F1 series. So coming onto the back straight here now, opens the DRS. And he's gone into the pits actually, has Stoke Blake. So he's third fastest on a 1 minute 10.2. So he's over a second off the pace is the number 12 Ferrari. And Noisy Boy 37 has gone to second place on a 1 minute 97. So he's quite some way off, 7 tenths of a second off the fastest time so far, with 11 minutes to go in this qualifying session. So who else is on the flying lap now? Here's Primitive 2 9. Uh, let's see if he opens his DRS. He does open his DRS, so that confirms to me that he is on a flying lap. He's about to set his first time of the session. What can he produce here? Coming out of the chicane, doesn't overdo it. It's very easy to invalidate your time by going over the curves. If you just cut the corner a bit too much or exceed the chat limits, you will easily not only invalidate your lap time that you are currently on, but also for the next lap. So it's pretty much a double whammy if you get it wrong. Anyway, Primitive 29 has gone 10th fastest on a 1 minute 12.7. And Kareem 2L07 has set his first proper lap time, 1 minute 14.263, to go uh, 11th quickest behind him. As you can see, uh, Binati Nasser in the Haas is currently in 9th position on a 1 minute 12.5. It's quite some way off the fastest time at the moment, uh, three and a half seconds to be exact. So he wants to be improving. Uh, to move up to the uh, move up on the leaderboard. And he comes into the pits that does the uh, the Haas driver. Now who else is out on circuit? Here is Shiva GB15 in the other Ferrari. He's on the medium compound tire uh, for this run. We need to see what strategies these drivers get, and he's just. He's invalidated his lap time actually, you can tell because the, the track map has gone red. So once the track map has gone red, that's an indication that he has uh, had his time invalidated by going over the curves. 
too much to the right of the white line. So that was something I was touching on a bit earlier a moment ago. Now here's Quasnada 67 in the racing point. I think he may well have already on. Oh, this is oh, that's a very there's a collision there between uh, Gummers in Gummers Hindu and White Stripes, and I think Gummers Hindu's got a five-place grid penalty for causing the collision. Didn't quite pick up the uh, the first part of the incident there, but it's left him right in the middle of the racetrack there, White Stripes, and luckily the car managed to ghost, and the Haas had to uh, well, it, well, it, White Stripes' car ghosted, and then the Haas driver went through. But that was a very very dangerous uh, position there for White Stripes to be in. And there's another car off there. Who's that that's gone there? It's one of the Renaults that's gone into a spin. Couldn't quite tell who that was there. I think it might have been Denmark 166 that's gone into a spin. No, it's Primitive 29. So Primitive 29 gone into a spin and he's been disqualified from the session. So Primitive 29 will start from the back of the grid no matter what without setting a time there. Here's Ben McEwen on his second time lap. Can he improve from his 1 minute 8.9? And the answer is yes. He's gone four tenths quicker as Ben McEwen on a 1 minute 8.5. He's eight tenths click, uh, clear of everyone else ahead of second place gamer James 06 v 2 So that's a phenomenal lap there from Ben McEwen. He could well be in play for the race win. He's only had two points from the first two rounds so far this season from the two rounds in Bahrain and at Monza has Ben McEwen. So he could do well here in Canada, so he's having a better time of it all, is Ben. Now, who else is on a flying? Denmark 166 is on a flying lap. He's got his DRS open, so he's definitely on a flyer. What can he produce in the Renault? Now, can he go over the line? There we go, we've got a better view of it all. So, Denmark 166 crosses the line, and he goes to a 1 minute 10.1. That puts him to sixth position on their leaderboard so he's 1.6 seconds off the pace but nevertheless a much better time for Denmark there was a yellow flag there in sector three I think that may have been just a car moving out of the way to let other cars by here is Stoke Blake who's on a better lap in fact better than Ben McEwen or better than his previous time what can he uh, clock on here he's gone for one minute 10 dead has Stoke Blake so very good lap there from Stoke Blake I think he may have his time invalidated actually because he cut uh, one of the corners maybe in the final chicane which is most likely the area where he has had his lap time disallowed let's find anyone else who's on a flying lap here here's uh, Radicon who's just started his flying lap actually one of the two race winners so far in the series. Okay, see the section there, first sector, no problem there. Has he improved from before? And I don't think he has, you know. And I think he's going to struggle to better his time from there. Does he go through the DRS zone? Does he use his DRS? He does use it. So we'll stay on board with him for now. Gummers in Duke has yet to set the time, but remember he's got a five place grid penalty for the collision with white stripes. So wherever he qualifies, he'll go back five places on the grid. Quasnada 67 has also yet to set a fast time and Kareem 2L07 has yet to set a rep more representative time than the one he's clocked already. But I expect him to go out on a, another run before the session ends. We've got just over five minutes of this session remaining and can any of these drivers improve their times? Ben McEwen's 1 minute 8.5. A phenomenal lap time. That's the fastest I've seen anyone do on this racetrack on F1 2020. As you can see, White Stripes is on a lap time now. He's posting a 19.7 in the first sector, so that's a clear indication that he's definitely on a fast lap. Let's stay with him. So no problem there. So far in the series, White Stripes is ninth in the standings on seven points from the first two rounds. Coming through the second section now, it's a 41-6 throughout the lap. Can he get anywhere near? Can he break into the top ten with this lap? He'll be hoping for at least a high one minute ten. 
coming through the chicane now. Hopefully there's no... And he's coming across the line now on the start finish straight. And it's a 1 minute 10.1. So it's a very good lap time. And he goes sixth fastest. Does White Stripes 93. A very good effort there from the number 22 Alpha Tauri. And noisy by 37 on the medium compound. Fourth quickest so far on a 1 minute 9.7 that he set on the soft compound earlier on in the session. What can he do on the mediums? I don't expect him to make too much of an improvement on this. Oh, he spins out into the barrier on the exit of the last chicane and he's left some debris on the racetrack. He's managed to reset back onto it, but that was a very, it took too much curb on the exit there of the final corner and that's wrecked his final run there. And he'll have to come back into the pits to get that notion. He's gone across the middle part of the racetrack and uh, yeah, he'll be on his way back into the pits to put on a new set of boots. Now, uh, Mike, uh, Micah's 22, is on a flying lap of his own and I think he's probably taken too much curb on the exit there you can tell because the track map has gone red and his lap time has been invalidated so no improvement there for him now who's out on circuit now B Natty Nutter 16th fastest on a 1 minute 12.5 can he make an improvement on this lap and he's got his DRS open so it's a clear indication that he's on a flying lap how much quicker is he in the second sector this time around? He's half a second off the fastest, so he could well be in play to put himself into the top 10 here. Is uh, Binati Nata. So we're coming across the start finish line now. I think he's lost time in the final sector actually, he's been at an effort. And there's no improvement there, so he stays 16th fastest. Now, Ray E46 just had his time invalidated there, so no improvement for him. Bishop's Finger 1 has, I think he's just completed his uh, recent time. He's got his 12th fastest on a 1 minute 10.8. I'm not sure he's going to improve on this lap. He wasn't very quick coming out of that section there of, uh, of turn 7. So he's got his DRS open, so he may well still be um, on a fast time. Let's see what his sec uh, second sector says. He's four hundredths off the fastest time, I believe. So let's stay on board with him and see what uh, lappy uh, clots up here. Got just over a minute to go, so anyone who is on a fast lap can complete their time when the checkered flag falls. So here's Vicious Finger, over the chicane, onto the start finish straight, a bit of grass on the exit there, that won't do his lap time any good really, he posts a better time than before to go ninth faster, so 1 minute 10.4 for Vicious Finger 1 in the Williams. And Radicon's just preparing for his last run. In Game of James 06 B2, second fastest on a 1 minute 9.3. And Ben McEwen's gone even faster with his lap on a 1 minute 8.2. So that's a very good lap time there from, from McEwen. As you can see there, phenomenal lap time there from McEwen. And there's an incident in the final corner. That's the Red Bull there of what looks like. Just looking at, I think it may have been Ray E46 that's just spun on the exit of the last corner. And I think it may well be. So. That's his lap ruined, and there's another car that spun off into uh, into the barrier on the exit. Couldn't quite tell who it was, but he's got going again now. So, so yeah, that's definitely right. E46 has wrecked his front wing, so that's his session over. And the checkered flag has fallen, so anyone on a flying lap can complete their time. Push his finger going into the pits. Stoke blokes, time is done. Here's Denmark 166. He's on a fast lap. In fact, his time's been invalidated because he's exceeded track limits. So no improvement there. And here's Radicom. Improvement on the 41-1 in by 62. Can he get close to Ben McEwen's time? Don't expect him to be on pole, but can he get onto the front row? He's just whacked the barrier on the exit there. Has the Mercedes driver. Goes over the line. It's an improvement, but he stays in third on the leaderboard. So Ben McEwen will start on pole position for the Canadian Grand Prix. 
seven seconds clear of Gamer James 06 B2 in second. And Radicon is third on the grid with Noisy Boy in fourth and Micah's 22 in fifth place. And Gummers Indu has a five place grid penalty for the collision with White Stripes, so he'll start 16th on the grid instead of 11th. So you can see there, so Ben McEwen fastest in that session with Gamer Jane's 06 v2 on the front row with him. So Ben McEwen, the Scott, fastest ahead of Gamer Jane's 06 v2. So it's an old brick front row. Radicon is third with Noisy Boy and Marcus 22 in fourth and fifth. White Stripes and Denmark 166 are next in sixth and seventh. It's Stoke Bloke in eighth, Bishop Swing in ninth, and Quasi Nada 67 rounding out the top 10. So just waiting any moment now for the race to be set up and then we'll be on the way for this 50% race distance of the uh, Montreal circuit. So it'll be a 35 lap race for this particular race. So the teams and drivers set up their race strategies. We expect it to be a two stop event, although others may choose to go on the one, but we'll find out soon enough as the race goes on. Drivers will be on their formation lap before the race gets underway, giving them the opportunity to warm up their brakes and tyres before the 35 lap event begins. So Ben McEwen on pole, head of Gamer James in second and Radicon in third position. So we've got the two race winners from the previous two rounds in second and third, Ben McEwen with only two points on the board could do a really good result to throw himself back into championship contention and judging by the pace that we've seen from him in qualifying, he's got a real chance of the victory here today. So the driver sets off on their formation lap. So Ben McEwen leads the grid. So Gamer James 06 v2. Hoping to keep up with him in the race. Likewise for Rade Com. So Ben McEwen, the Scott. Hoping to deliver a clean and solid performance. Now considering the nature of the Montreal circuit, we do expect some safety cars during the event which could uh, take its toll on race strategy for the drivers so Ben McEwen leads the way you can see Primitive 29 making up the grid so 18 drivers will take to the grid for the Canadian Grand Prix round 3 of the American F1 series and Tom Cairns in the commentary box giving you the details of today's race. So not long to go now, Ben McEwen backing up the field. The cost of the drivers uh, says that they're disqualified from the session. Well, they're not disqualified from the session. It's just that sometimes uh, on the formation lap, if you make contact with another driver, it just you know puts you back onto the grid for the start of the race. So don't worry too much about those two. You can see the predicted pit stop strategy. So those on the two stop pit window between lap 8 and 12 for the first pit stops. For those on the soft rubber, we expect others on the mediums to go longer as well so five lights will come on any moment now and we'll be racing here in Canada
We're on the way in Montreal and McEwen gets off to a poor start. Gamer James 06 v2 into the lead ahead. I thought it's, but uh, yeah, it is Gamer James 06 v2 into the lead. And well, it says it's been Natty Natter, but he's not in the lead actually. So, and there's a collision at the back there. White Stripes 93 has gone round the wrong way and he's at the back of the field already. So it's a poor start for him. But Gamer James 06 v2 is in the lead ahead of Ben McEwen. It's Marcus 22, Radicon in fourth, Noisy Boy in fifth, Stoke Blake sixth. So Denmark, so it's, it's a great start there for Gamer James 06. A poor start for Ben McEwen. Didn't get off the line very, very well. And he's fallen behind the McLaren who pulls away. So Gamer James 06, the championship leader, pulls out in front. So Ben McEwen following through. And that is uh, White Stripes who seems to have a problem there he may have picked up a, uh, a punch there was a yellow flag there someone's just had an incident actually and there we go so that's one of the red bulls who's in trouble that's uh, ray e46 who's picked up a problem there bishop's finger right behind him so not sure what's happened there at the back meanwhile and there's a clout with the wall there damage there to gaming james 06's car that's not going to do the handling on his mclaren any good whatsoever and that's going to give ben McEwen a real opportunity to get back in front of him and Ben McEwen, not a good time to be breaking um, the front wing there. That's not going to do the aerodynamic performance any good whatsoever. So he's got a um, huge job in his hands to keep Ben McEwen behind him. As you can see, three cars in the pits there. Kareem 2L07, one of those coming in. There's the Ferrari of Schiffigida 15, and Vicious Finger 1 in the Williams. So they've got a man of the task to do between now and the end of the race. Game and James 06 leading ahead of Ben McEwen. It's Marcus 22 in third, Noisy Boy in fourth, Radicon fifth, Stoke Bloke, Denmark 166, Quasi Nada 67, to Simpy and Primitive 29 running out the top 10. Primitive 29 making a great start from the back of the grid, has made up eight places already from his starting position. There's no DRS yet until the third lap of the race, so Ben McEwen won't get the straight line speed advantage. But I'm sure he'll be as patient as he needs to be, considering that Gamer James 06 in the McLaren has picked up front wing damage after clouting the wall of champions at the end of the opening lap. So further, let's have a look further down the order. Any changes there? Anyone back in full position? They're all pretty much spaced out, as we know. So it's pretty much uh, nipping up really. Keep an eye on those cars and. Gamer James 06 v2 has already picked up a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. So that'll be for exceeding track limits uh, throughout the race so far. So that's not going to do his chances of race victory any good whatsoever. And Ben McEwen will be relishing the opportunity. That will come up on his um, leaderboard as well. So he'll be aware of Gamer James's uh, time penalty um, come the end of the race. That will not be taken at the pit stop. That will be added to his race time at the end of the event. And it's the same with Quasi Nada 67. He's also picked up a three second time penalty for multiple warnings, exceeding trap limits there for the racing point driver. And as you can see, Ben McKean's got the DRS open now. Gamer James will be under pressure. I wonder if Gamer James will fight it out with him at this point of the race. Will he come into the pits to get that nose change? I think he's going to stay out for as long as he can. And when Ben McKean gets by him, that's when he may choose the pits um, at some point soon get that front wing change. Locks up into turn one. Ben McEwen doesn't want to take too many risks with him. Now these drivers are professional racing drivers. They will not, they will leave enough room on the straights. It's not going to be like a game of supermarket choice where cars just sort of bash into each other. They will race professionally as those online would normally do. As you can see the drivers coming onto the back straight now. Gamer James protecting his line. Ben McEwen can sense an opportunity and slots back in behind him. Contact there between the McLaren and the Williams and Gamer James manages to pull away there but that was very nearly Ben McEwen's front wing taking some damage there and I can imagine he'll want to get back onto the rear of him and nearly runs into the back of the number 54 McLaren and will need to be patient here as they come onto the back straight. Ben McEwen will have the DRS and pulls alongside the McLaren and I think this is going to be a slam dunk manoeuvre there. So Ben McEwen back into the lead. They had lost at the start and James will remain behind him as they complete lap four of the event. 
Denmark 166 overtaking Soaklo up into sixth position in the Renault. You can see there with the Duras open, he managed to complete the move at the end of the back straight before the final chicane there. So good move there from the Renault driver. He's having a good race so far. See there, there's the Alpha Tauri of De Simpi, who has now picked up a three second time penalty. So he's the third driver to pick up a time penalty for multiple warnings there. So that will go towards his time at the end of the race. And Marcus 22 follows suit. He's got a three second time penalty for exceeding the trap limits. And Tilwick 14 into the pits for what looks like an unscheduled pit stop that would probably be for damage and he'll be back out onto the track there in 16th place behind Bish's finger so back at the front McEwen continuing to pull away and Gaming James 06 does pit at the end of lap 5 so perhaps the damage was too much to the point which he needed to pit and off come the softs and on go the what looks like the medium compound for Game James 06. So interesting to see what his pace will be like as the race goes on for the drivers. So the penalties there, so you can see the penalties that are being dished out so far. So not just drivers being given penalties, but how much is the penalty worth come the end of the race. So we'll just keep that on the screen for the time being. So McEwen in the lead, almost coming up to lap uh, Kareem 2L07, who's a long way behind. I know he's just had a pit stop, but he's got a mountain to climb to uh, get back into a points paying position. And White Stripes just coming to the pits for, presumably, for a change of nose cone. So nearly six laps done. Ben McEwen over the chicane to start lap. Seven, Noisy Boy 37 in second place. As I say, Radicon's been given a time penalty for multiple warnings. So that's three seconds uh, added to his race time come the end of the race for the Mercedes driver, one of the two race winners so far this season. He'll be looking to add that to his total, but he'll need to pull out at least three seconds on everyone else to do just that. Anyone battling for position now on track? There's a battle going on here between the McLaren and the Red Bull. And the Red Bull there of uh, Ray E46 losing it coming out of the second corner of the lap. Probably put the power down too much. Now, these drivers are running without traction control, which could explain why uh, Ray E46 uh, put the power down too early. And Denmark 166 is the latest driver to be given a time penalty for exceeding the track limits. So that will go towards his race time and the Red Bull there of Marcus 22 closing up on Noisy Boy 37 who has also got his three, uh, three second time penalty so this is going to very much jumble the race order come the end of the race with all these penalties and White Stripes 93 has got past Tilwick 14 for 15th position McEwen on his own there, 2.2 seconds clear of Noisy Boy 37 and Gamer James 06 V2 has set the fastest off of the race, a 1 minute 12.2. So he is setting um, some good pace so far, he's 7 seconds clear behind De Simpi, is the McLaren driver, the championship leader. So keep an eye on his times as the race goes on, rapidly eating into De Simpi's uh, gap there. He's also just got by uh, Gummer's Indu as the Alpha Tower driver, so that's to simply up into 7th place. And Dan McEwen looking very content up at the front as the drivers complete the 8th lap of this Canadian Grand Prix. Round 3 of the American F1 Racing Series. And as you can see there, as Ben McEwen crosses the line, the pit window is open 
for those who have started the race on the soft compound. So will Ben McEwen pit at the end of this lap? He may choose to stay out, you know, but you know the amount of time you lose in the pits is not so very much here in Montreal because you do feed into the pits um, at the penultimate corner, at the beginning, beginning of the final chicane, and you feed back out through turn two. So right, that's why race strategy is going to be so key here at Montreal. And Stoke Blokes picked up a time penalty now for multiple warnings. So that will go towards his race time. And I think Gamer James 06 has picked up another three seconds that will go towards his time at the end of the race. So not good news for him. But he's gone up into seventh place now, has James. Ben McEwen continuing to pull away. Marcus 22 in second. And Noisy Boy has, uh, I believe, he may have had a, had a pit stop actually. Let's just have a look and see if he has had a pit stop. Yes, he has. So Noisy Boy 37 came in for a pit stop actually uh, to go onto what is now the medium compound. So will. Uh, ben in fact, Ben McEwen's in the pits now. So Ben McEwen into the pits as Gummers Indo picks up a time penalty for exceeding the track limits. And McEwen coming back out onto the racetrack. There's uh, Noisy Boy who has just pitted, but I think McEwen's going to have enough momentum to remain in front. So McEwen maintains what is effectively the race lead ahead of Noisy Boy as Marcus 22, who's now in the lead on the road, has picked up a three second time penalty for exceeding the track limits. So McEwen has got a bit of a buffer actually because Gummers Indu, who has yet to stop, is holding up Noisy Boy, but not for long because Noisy Boy 37 is alongside him on the back straight and it's going to be a slam dunk maneuver there for the Al uh, Alfa Romeo drivers. So that's Noisy Boy up to third position there as De Simpi picks up another three seconds there, as does Primitive 29 for exceeding the chop limits. So there's going to be penalties aplenty come the end of the race as Karim 2 7 has picked up another three seconds. And I wonder when Marcus 22 is going to be pitting because he's on the medium compound. He started the race on the medium compound, so we expect him to go long on the first stint. He may choose to go on the hard tyre for when he comes in for his pit stop. And if he does, we expect him to go on a one stop strategy. So no drivers have retired from the race yet as Gamer James 06 v 2 has set up the new fastest lap of the race, a 1 minute 12 point dead. as. Quasinada 67 has got past the Haas of Binati Nata for 11th position. Now, looking at the leaderboard, there are only six drivers who have yet to pick up a time penalty as Binati Nata, as I speak, has just picked up a five-second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Now, for a penalty like that, that can be served at his next pit stop or that will be added to his race time at the end. So, not good news there for him. You can see that the Red Bull of Mikus 22 in the lead. Coming in for his first pit stop. Now, what is he going to go on here? Is he going to go on the medium or is he going to go on the soft? Let's have a look. I think he's gone on the soft compound, so he's probably going to go medium, soft, and then medium for the end. As Ben McEwen sets the new fastest after the race up on the 11.8. And he's gone back into the lead on track. So this is very much falling into McEwen's hands. No penalty to his name so far in the event. So he's very much the favourite to win this race now, providing he does not make any slip ups. As Denmark 166 has picked up another three second time penalty. And there's an incident in the last section of the, uh, of the lap, but that's cleared very, very quickly there. So looking further down the order, and uh, Shifigidi. Uh, 15 has picked up a three second time penalty, so that, which means there are now only four drivers who have not been penalised so far in this race here at Montreal. You can see the Ferrari of Stoke Bloke in 10th position on the medium compound. The next man up front is Ray E46.
So Mokas sponsored suit. Lincoln in modes on Gummers Indu, who has yet to make. Well, he has pitted actually, I think, but it hasn't actually come into the pitch yet. I think he. I don't think he has actually pitted actually as Gummers Indu. So he's going on a long first stint. But Malgus 22 will be on much fresher rubber than the Mercedes driver. Someone's gone off in the last corner. Let's find out who that was. Uh, there it is. Ray E46 has damaged his front wing and has got going again. And his front, and there's debris all over the race trail. I wonder if we'll have a virtual safety car or a safety car, but he's got going again now anyway. So that's uh, Ray E46 needing to go through a whole lap without a front wing. And yeah, there is a safety car now, so Ben McEwen's lead will be wiped out. Uh, Primitive 29 has picked up a 5 second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. And that will be to... Uh, the safety car will be to clear up the debris as Ben McEwen backs up uh, Noisy Boy. And there's a drive through penalty actually now for Tilwick 14 for speeding under the safety car. He's currently in 16th place actually, so it's Tilwick, but he won't be able to take that penalty under the safety car. That'll have to be taken on the restart. And there's a five second time penalty now for. Uh, just missed him. Um, who got that penalty there? That was for uh, an incident with Ray E46. That might have been. Uh, that might have been Vicious Finger actually for a severe collision with Ray E46 because he was the one who was also involved in that. And Ray E46 struggling to get round the corner. He's got no front wing as the Red Bull driver. You can see Stoke Bloke going onto the hard compound tyre, so we expect him to go to the end of the race. Can he be in the frame for a top five finish or indeed a podium? We'll soon find out at the end. So you can see Ben McEwen behind the safety car. In fact, Noisy by 37 came into the pits for a change onto the hard compound. Now that's interesting. Ben McEwen hasn't come into the pits for a change of tyres. Uh, Noisy by 37 has, and he's gone to the hard compound. Gummers Indu, who had not pitted before the safety car period, has also gone onto the hard compound. So those two could be in play for the race win later on, as McEwen, Malkis and Radikon will be expected to pit at the end of this race. As the safety car continues to go round, see McEwen continuing to warm up his mediums. Now, will he go to the end on those medium compound tyres? It is possible to do it on this circuit, but he's going to be pretty much vulnerable to those on the hard compound tyres or those on fresher rubber um, at the end of the event. No one has gone into the pits uh, on this lap time around. Now there are two drivers who are a lap down in the queue actually. Primitive 29 and Karim 2L07. As you can see there, Denmark 166 trying to get ahead there, but you're not allowed to overtake under the um, safety car conditions. Oh, and someone's gone into the back of him there. I'm not sure what's happened there actually. There may have been just a lag um, for Denmark 166. Ah, oh, there we go, like, yeah. So Denmark 166 has been given a 5 second time penalty for a collision with Gummers Indu under the safety car. So whilst we're waiting for the race to get back on the way, let's have a look on the penalty systems now. So Denmark 166 has got 11 seconds time penalty, so that's not going to do him any favours actually, especially now that we're under the safety cars. So he's going to need to go blindly quick once the restart gets underway. And there are only three drivers who have not received a penalty at all in the event. They are Ben McEwen, White Stripes 93, and Bishop's Finger 1. The Gummers Indu up 10 places from his starting position. Very good for him. And he's only got a time penalty of 3 seconds. So that's not too bad actually for Johnson Duke, considering how much each of the others have got. Tilwick 14 with a drive through, which he'll need to take at the 
restart. The field has been behind the safety car for a couple of laps now, so this will be the last lap under safety car conditions before the race gets back underway again. So Ben McEwen leads ahead of Marcus 22, then Mede Con in third, Noisy Boy 37 in fourth, then it's Denmark 166 in fifth, Gummers Indu in sixth, Gisimpi in seventh, and Gummers Indu in sixth. In fact, there's just been a change of uh, position actually, which is strange because Gummers Indu has picked up a five second time penalty for ignoring the yellow flags. Now I wonder what that is all about because the Simpy's just got in front of him. The Gums Indu, I think, may have been, uh, may have tried to overtake him again or something. That's a very strange um, scenario. But the Simpy's in front of him on the road. And Shipper gives, and uh, safety car's in this lap now. So we should get back on, we're about to get back on the way again. Ben McEwen will effectively become the pace car, lead the safety car to pull back into the pits. And once McEwen is ready, we'll be back underway again for the Canadian Grand Prix. And another penalty for Bishop's Finger. He's now the latest to be given a penalty for a severe collision with Ray E46. So now Ben McEwen is the only driver to not be penalised in the event. We're about to go back underway again now. And we're underway again. And now plenty more drivers have been given penalties there. I mean, the stewards are going to be very, very busy after the race. It's going to take some time for us to work out who is actually going to be finishing where. Because if you look at Malkus 22, he's got a six second time penalty. And Radicon Noisy Boy have got three seconds each. So as it stands, those two would be ahead of uh, Malkus 22 in second and third. But we'll work it out as the race goes on. We've still got 19 laps to go of this Canadian Grand Prix. Ben McEwen leads, Marcus 22 second, Radicon third, Noisy Boy fourth, Denmark fifth, and Dissimpi in sixth place. Gamer James 06, who had pitted for a new nose cone and was leading earlier in the event, he's just got ahead of Gomez Indu into seventh place, but he's got 11 seconds of, pen of a uh, time penalty that will be added to his time come the end of the race. And all 18 drivers who have started uh, the Canadian Grand Prix have not, uh, all 18 drivers are still running in the event. So ben McEwen crosses the line. Let's have a look further back. Any battles going on? A three second time penalty has also been added to Quasi now the 67 sign for multiple warnings. So presumably for uh, corner cutting or exceeding the track limits. Here we can see Bishop's finger on the pressure there from the Ferrari of Shippey D15 and Ray E46. And that Gummer's Indu has dropped down the order. I wonder what's happened to him. Has he had, I think he's in the pits for a new nose cone, actually. He must have had a coming together with someone. So that's his race wrecked now. That's probably his chances of the race win gone out of the window. He'll rejoin behind the Renault there. That looks like a Primitive 29, who's a lap down, actually. And two more drivers have picked up time points. Noisy Boy is one of them. And Marcus 22 has also picked up another three seconds. So that's that makes it even more interesting now in terms of the battle for the race win is concerned. Well, maybe not for the race win, but for second place, most definitely. So working it out at the moment, Radicon would finish second if you were to consider the time penalties. So Ben McEwen can take it very, very easy, actually. It doesn't need to actually win the race on the road. I'm sure he would love to win it on the road anyhow. And as it stands with the game of James 06 in 7th place, and Gummers Indu in, in 13th, gap at the top of the, ch or Radicon I should say, Radicon's in what is effectively 2nd place now, he would, he would take the lead in the championship as it stands, because he would have 18 points from the event and Game James 06 would only have six points from the event so with the gap being eight points between those two Radicon would take the lead and he would be eight points clear of Game James 06 as it stands
So let's have a look and see. So was another. He's got another three seconds to his time. Ben McHugh and Quasinada, another five seconds for corner cutting now. So that's his race even more compromised. Ben McHugh in, no problems with him whatsoever, as Tilwick 14 has pitted for his drive through penalty. So he's now penalty free, providing he does not exceed the truck limits too much. Or, or uh, any corner cuts in. So Ben McEwen continuing to lead the way. Marcus 22, a couple of seconds behind him on the road. But if you were to add the time penalty to his, uh, to his race time, he would drop down to fourth place. There's a yellow flag in sector three. Just want to pick up on what that is. And it's on the last corner, actually. I think it's to do with the McLaren to pick up on it and as you can see that there's the Haas of Tilwick 14 who has just made a pit stop as uh, put, has picked up some damage by the looks of it and B Natter has picked up three seconds and Quasinada 67 has retired from the race as well so that's the first retirement of the race so we're down to 17 runners in the Canadian Grand Prix McEwen in the lead. There's a battle going on for fourth place between Vadicon and the Mercedes and Gamer James 06. So it's a battle of the top two in the Drivers' Championship going head to head on track now. Now remember, Vadicon has got three seconds of time penalties. Gamer James 06 has got 14 seconds worth of time penalties. So Gamer James 06, if he's going to salvage anything from this race, he needs to get by Vadicon as soon as possible. I don't know if Vadicon's already aware of the uh, Gavin James 06's time penalty, but nevertheless, I think they're going to go toe to toe on circuit. Gavin James 06 in the slipstream with DRS, and he's going to get the move done here into turn one. And there we go. So that's fourth place for the McLaren driver, but he needs to make up 11 seconds on Vadicon uh, within 14 laps. Let's see what else is going out uh, going on on track. There's a battle for 8th position between Bishop's Finger in the Williams and Stoke Bloke in the Ferrari as uh, Denmark 166 has got another 3 seconds added to his time. There's an incident out of sector 2 that's just been cleared now. Couldn't quite tell who it was that's responsible for the yellow flag. So Ben McEwen continuing to lead. Four seconds ahead now of Marcus 22 in second. And as it stands with Marcus 22's gap with Noisy Boy, it's Noisy Boy who will be in second place. And uh, another couple of penalties has just been dished out to Marcus 22 and Gamer James 06. So that's 12 seconds worth of time penalty for Marcus 22 and 17 seconds worth for Gamer James 06. So it's going to shake up the uh, the race order come the end of the race. Now drivers can submit inquiries to the stewards after the race if they feel that a penalty has been awarded to them unfairly via the game itself. Meanwhile, Malgus 22 continuing to lead the trio of Noisy Boy and Gamer James 06. Uh, James 06 continuing his recovery drive after pitting early on after his front wing damage and a spin there for Malchus 22 out of the hairpin and he's just lost three positions there to Noisy Boy, James and Radicon so that's Malchus 22 on the back foot once more he had picked up another three seconds a lap ago and now he's dropped three positions on the road thanks to a spin coming out of the hairpin so clearly putting the power down 
too much. And Gamer James 06 has just gone by, Noisy Boy, into second place. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to finish second because he's got 11 seconds worth of time penalty more than 06. He's got to put out some blinders to keep his second place or finish on the podium if he wants to keep hold of the lead in the Drivers' Championship in the American F1 series. And given his performances so far this season, I've got every bit of confidence that he's going to be able to close down the lead on Ben McEwen. I don't know if Ben McEwen will be aware of Gaming James's time penalty. He probably will be. So if he does pull up alongside, I don't think Ben McEwen will fight it out too much. So Ben McEwen, absolutely dominant in this race so far. As you can see, Bishop's Finger 1 has now... He's now penalty free in fact, so Bishop's Finger, looking at all the times in terms of the penalties for each of the drivers ahead of him, he's got a great chance of a good points finish here, as Binetti Nasser has moved off a position ahead of White Stripes 93, and this is why, so White Stripes 93 in the pits for a change of tyres, going on to what looks like the medium compound. So he'll be going to the end on those tyres there rejoins in 14th place. I think he just served some of his time penalties actually did White Stripes, so that's pretty much down his limitations. Tilwick has picked up a three second time penalty. In fact, Noisy Boy has picked up three seconds, so that's good news actually for Game James 06, because if Game James 06 can pull out eight seconds on Noisy Boy, he will retain his position at the front. As you can see, uh, Primitive 29 coming into the pits for a change of tyres. He's well down the order in this. There's an incident sector two. And there you can see that's the Alvatari of White Stripes 93 who has stopped out on the circuit. I wonder if that's going to bring out a safety car by the looks of it. He's got going again. But yeah, he's, he's just made a uh, pit stop actually. He's got going again now. He's just let the, uh, the Red Bull go through. But yeah, that, I wonder what happened there for, uh, for White Stripes. Ben McEwen crossing the line. Ten laps to go for the Williams driver. Gamer James in second, five seconds of drifting in, so he's closing down that gap bit by bit each lap. Is the McLaren driver, but remember he's got a 17-second time penalty come the end of the race. So Ben McEwen. So Ben McEwen continuing to lead over Gamer James in second place, and it's Noisy Boy in third. Radicon with just three seconds of time penalty could well finish second at this rate. If it does so, that could give him the lead in the championship. So Gamer James needs to do all he can to close down the gap to Ben McEwen and ideally take the lead and then pull out enough of the gap to the likes of Noisy Boy, Radicon, and Stoke Bloke behind him. Ben McEwen putting, putting down a lap on the Haas there. And what looks like uh, B Natter by the looks of it. And there we go. So, yeah, so it was B Natter that um, Ben McEwen was putting a lap on. And more penalties being dished out to both the Haas drivers. Three second time penalties for multiple warnings there. So Marcus 22 posting a new fastest up, a 1 minute 11.7. So after that mistake coming out of the hairpin, he's making up ground actually. So I want to go back and see how he's doing in fifth place actually. Is, uh, is Marcus 22, there he is in the Red Bull. He's just got by actually of uh, Stoke Blake. So that's him up into fifth place. He's 16 and a half seconds behind. Rad, uh, Radicon in four, so he's got not a lot of time really to make up the gap on Radicon. And remember, he's got 12 seconds worth of time penalties to be added. You can see there the battle between uh, Shifter Goody 15 and Bishop Swinger 1. Now, Shifter Goody uh, 15 has got a three second time penalty, Bishop Swinger does not have any time penalties at all. 
And behind them is Gummer's Indu, who is one of the championship favourites for this season. I just want to watch this battle as they go onto the back straight here now. And the Williams show has lost time coming out of the, uh, the hairpin there. I wonder if he got the power down a bit too much coming out there. And uh, White Shows has got another three seconds added to his race time. So the gap between Ben McEwen and Game James, three seconds. Um, Noiser Boy only a, just under three seconds behind Game James. So as it stands, with Ben McEwen lead, and as you can see, there's an incident. Actually, there may have just been a car moving out of the way, actually. So Ben McEwen would win. Vatican finishing second. I'm just trying to pick up on the cars. Uh, I wonder if there's a Haas that stopped out on the circuit. Or is he just moving out of the way to let the cars through? I think that's Tilwick 14 is moving out of the way to let the leaders through. So not been too major there. As you can see, uh, Kareem 2007 coming into the pits for a change of tyres. Well down the order is uh, Kareem. So Shifagidi 15. Keeping hold of his ninth place. So Gomez Indu did get ahead of Vicious Finger on the last lap. He within DRS actually now of uh, Shifagidi. And I would think this is going to be a slam dunk manoeuvre because Gummer's Indu is much quicker than Shifikidi, judging by his qualifying. Pulling alongside him into the last chicane, and it's job done there. So very well done there for the Mercedes. Up into uh, ninth place now. As uh, Desimpi came into the pit, so that's eighth place actually now for Gummer's Indu on the track. So, Game of James 06, less than two seconds behind now of Ben McEwen. So, as it stands with the times, Game of James 06 will drop to fourth place by the looks of it, just calculating on the time penalties. So, it's not too bad of a result, but I'm wanting, he'll want to try and finish on the podium if he can. Six laps to now for McEwen. Game and James in second place. Noisy Boy in third. So Gummers Indu in eighth. You can see a battle now, an inc incredibly great battle now between Shifigidu 15, uh, Desimpi, Ray E46, and uh, Bishop's Finger. So a four car battle for ninth place on the track. You can see the Alpha Tower there with Desimpi coming back into the pits. I think he just made a pit stop actually as uh, Desimpi. As Bishop's Finger has picked up another three seconds for exceeding the track limit. So Ben McEwen, 1.6 clear now. So Game of James slowly eating into the gap. Five laps to go now. And Ben McEwen on his way to victory. His first victory of the season. He only picked up two points in the championship so far from the first two rounds. That's going to be increased from two to 27, which would very much put him into the top five or six in the, in the standings. And that will do his championship no harm at all. You can see Game of James 06 and a new fast is up now for Denmark 166. So 1 minute 11.7. He's currently in sixth place is the, uh, is the runner driver. So he'll be on course to get that championship point should he remain in the top 10. And Bishop's Finger making a move on Ray E46 to move up into the points. On the road at least anyway. He's got a three second time penalty as Bishop's Finger as does Ray E46. Well, eight, Ray E46 has got eight seconds time penalty. But here's a battle that's interesting because both Bishop's Finger and Shifty 15 in the Ferrari, as you can see on your picture, they both have the same amount of time penalty. So this is actually a battle on the road between these two and a battle for race position. And uh, a very easy manoeuvre there. I'm a bit surprised actually that uh, Shifty 15 didn't fight it that much. 
I wonder if he's picked up damage from before. So the gap is less than a second between McEwen in the lead and Damon James 06 in second place. And I don't think McEwen will fight it out too much, to be honest with you. I think he'll let Gamer James go through. And, uh, well, Gamer James's day has just got worse because he's got another three seconds added to his race time. So he needs to try and get past McEwen as soon as possible, ideally on the back straight. So here we go, look, a battle for the lead on track. You can see McEwen both drivers harvesting energy there they're all on the last touch of um, ERS there those two you can see there's the Alpha Tauri of what looks like uh, white stripes uh, behind me oh no it's um, uh, Kizimpi I should say or Dizimpi um, sorry my apologies there so Dan McEwen keeping hold of the lead and Noisy Boy is going to be on the tail of these two if they, if they keep battling. You can see there the Alfa Romeo just pops into your picture. He'll be closing on the, the two in front. So Tilwick, 14, also getting a three second time penalty added. He's on to nine seconds worth of time penalties. So out of the street now comes Gamer James 06, pulls alongside McEwen and he goes into the lead on the track. So McEwen not fighting it too much. As you can see there, Dissimpi has got a three second time penalty. He was supposed to move out of the way of the Alfa Romeo of Noisy by 37 as he was a lap ahead of him. So McEwen not fighting out too much with Gamer James. I'm sure you would love to have battled it out with him, but Gamer James 06 has a 20 second time penalty as it stands, which would drop in behind uh, McEwen and Noisy Bike. So Gamer James 06, as it stands, would finish in third place with two laps to go now. As you can see Noisy Boy alongside McEwen with DRS. McEwen doesn't have DRS. I don't think McEwen's going to fight this out too much. Or is he? Because Noisy Boy hasn't quite got his nose in front of the Williams. And that's uh, McEwen keeping his nose in front there. And looking at the two, who's got more ERS than the other? In fact, at the moment, it's the Williams that's got more ERS. But McEwen's going to have DRS. McEwen is not going to have DRS. So I think uh, Noisy Boy is going to pull out the slipstream here and pull a similar move. In fact, it's going to the inside this time. So I think this is going to be a slam dunk manoeuvre here for Noisy Boy. And that's McEwen down to third on the road. So the race leader, Gamer James 06, is on his final lap. As... Almost getting overtaken there by the Renault, who's a lap behind him. That's that'll be prim uh, primitive uh, 29th. You can see Gamer James 06 back into the lead for the first time since the opening stages of the race, but he's not going to keep the victory because of his mammoth time penalty. Noiser Boy will finish ahead of him, providing he stays within eight seconds of the McLaren driver. So it'll be Ben McEwen. They'll take victory, become the third different winner from thir uh, three races in the American F1 series. So, just a few corners to go now for Gamer James. And the number 54 McLaren. He's been phenomenal in this race today. Great recovery drive. But we'll have to wait and see what the time penalties affect, how the time penalties affect the race result, the run in the last couple of corners now, Gamer James comes out of the final corner onto the start finish straight, he takes the victory on the track, but he won't keep the race victory altogether, that's going to go to Ben McEwen, who crosses the line in third on the road, but with Noisy Boy and Gamer James's time penalty, he wins the Canadian Grand Prix, his first victory of the season in the American F1 series, that's a phenomenal drive by him, no penalties at all throughout the event, a phenomenal effort from pole position for Ben McEwen which will do his championship chances no harm whatsoever 
Noisy Boy comes home second as a result of the time penalty, and Gamer James is third. So Gamer James 06 will keep hold of the lead in the championship. Radicon comes home in fourth place with the time penalties added. Denmark 166 will be fifth and with the fastest lap points. Malkus 22 in sixth place, and it's Stoke Bloke Gummers Indu who just waiting to cross over the line now. He's got a 14 second time penalty, actually, as Gummers Indu. Um, so just waiting for confirmation on the leaderboard. But a great effort and a great victory for Ben McEwen, the third different driver from three races to take victory there. So a fantastic result there for Ben McEwen. So looking at the times, so Doisy Boy delighted with his second place there. Phenomenal effort by him. And in terms of the championship for him, he moves on to 30 points. So he moves a touch closer to gaining the James and Radicon in the championship. But no one can stop Ben McEwen. He was unstoppable. And with the with a penalty free race for him, there was no doubt he was going to be winning today. No mistakes whatsoever from the Williams driver. And he celebrates with the champagne with Noisy Boy and Gamer James 06. Phenomenal effort by him. And what a result there. So to take a look at the, champ uh, the, uh, the race result here in Montreal. So your final classification. So Ben McEwen wins ahead of Noisy Boy in second place. Then it's Gamer James 06 who keeps his lead in the championship. Then it's Radicon in fourth. Denmark 166 in fifth. Malkus 22 in sixth place. Then it's Stoke Blake. Bishop's Finger 1. Gummers Indu. And Shifigildi 15 rounding out the top 10. De Simpi did set the fastest lap of the race, but he finished outside the points in 12th position. So that point will go to Denmark 166. Uh, Ray E46 in 11th place, and it's De Simpi in 12th. White Stripes 93 in 13th. B Natty Natu in 14th. Tilwick 14. Primitive 29. Karim, T, uh, Karim CL Z ZL07 running up the finishes. Quasi Nada 67 was the only driver to not finish the race there. So many warnings and so many penalties throughout the event. But as ever, if you keep your car clean and penalty free, you've got a great chance of winning. Well, that's all for today in the American F1 series uh, for round three in Canada. The next time that the championship we're racing, likely to be next weekend for the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring. I'm Tom Cairns, and I'll speak to you again soon.